Hi everyone, this is Laura and you're at Mobility from the Ground to Up. Today we're going to be focusing on movements for the low back, so I hope you're excited for that. Um, I have, we're going to be doing some movements from the ground, mobility from the ground up. So I have a couple things that I can use here to place under my head or under my hips should my low back need that support or my neck need that support. Um, you can also do, I'm going to be doing some of the movements from the floor, a floor seated position, but based on your comfort level, you can absolutely do it seated up on a chair, preferably a non-rotating spinny chair, um, but like a firm, solid, uh, more like a dining chair. All right, let's get started. We're going to check in with how our low back is feeling with just some simple, I like using this cat cow knee hand position as a way to check in. So we're rounding and then we are extending, so flexing the spine, extending the spine. Now this involves the neck and the upper back as well as the lumbar. So we're gonna we're gonna shake out the wrist if you need to. Again, my trick for wrist, heel of the hand up on something, finger fingertips down on something because that's bothering the wrist. And now we're gonna just flex and extend the lumbar spine. So what this is gonna feel like is you're gonna, as we're flexing, you're gonna tuck the tailbone under almost like you're trying to get your tailbone to point down toward the ground instead of out. And then you're going to untuck, like you're trying to get your tailbone to point up toward the ceiling. It's not probably going to point up to the ceiling. You have some mobility that I don't, if you're able to do that. And let's do that again, nice and slow. So our, a lot of us experience low back pain at some point in our life, I believe the number is like 80%. So working on our mobility here can actually be really powerful, tool, a really powerful toolbox to help mitigate back pain or ease us out of back pain. So I'm still flexing and extending, tucking and untucking my tailbone. That isolates that lumbar area. You've got five lumbar vertebrae. And that's where a lot of people experience that low back pain. All right, let's come out of this position now that we've isolated a little bit. So now you've experienced that lumbar spine flexing and extending, and we're, the lumbar is also capable of uh, lateral flexion. So we're going to do a little bit of lateral flexion from an upright position. I'm seated seated on the ground. And I'm going to do, I also want you to see here that when we're working with the lumbar, we really want to have the pelvis um, neutral. So this is my fake pelvis. This is, I have a real pelvis and a, a yoga block pelvis. So we want that pelvis to be square on the bottom. So if you're seated on the floor or any surface, you feel like you're tucked under, sit on the edge of something, sit up on a yoga block or a chair to allow you to sit in yoga, they say sit on your sit bones. So I don't want you, because I don't want you to be doing this lateral flexion with a compromised lumbar spine to begin with. So elevate the hips as you need to here. I can do it from the floor because I've been working on my my hip and spine mobility. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with the right hand reaching across and then leaning to the side. I'll show you from the front view as well. Reaching across and then leaning to the side. So I'm elongating the right side of my body, the reaching arm side of my body. If this feels pretty good to you, you can reach up and over. If your shoulders don't like the overhead position, this is still gonna give you that little extra pull. You should feel a stretch through the side of the body. What I find for a lot of my students is that when the students who have a lot of low back pain often tend to be either very mobile, hypermobile, left arm this time, reach across, lean. 
So they have that either are hypermobile or really struggle having a lot of movement in that area. There's a lot of guarding happening and a lot of tension. So we wanna loosen up the tension. And if you're hypermobile, we wanna really think about staying in alignment here. Keep on breathing. If you have legs, we're gonna do one more time each side. But if you have legs crossed like I do, switch which leg is crossed in front and which leg is uh, behind here. Makes a big difference. Um, it might feel very strange. So you might need to bolster up if you're on the floor. This time we're gonna put our hand down on the ground as we reach over or across so that we get a little bit more gravity assistance because it can pull on us a little bit more as we reach over. So we're getting this lateral flexion, not just through the low back, but through the whole spine. But switch sides. So I put my hand on the ground, I'm reaching toward, reach up and over, or over and across the other side. Good. We're going to do it one more time like this on each side with the hand on the ground. But this time I want to, before you reach over, check in with your pelvis. Do we have that kind of neutral, neutral pelvis? And so pretend this is my pelvis here. As you're reaching over, make sure that both sides of the pelvis stay down on the ground. And it doesn't tip up, right? So when we reach over this way, pelvis wants to also tip. To really get that stretch and know how far we're stretching, kind of on a, you think of stretching on a, a, a grid almost, you gotta keep the bottom half set since the upper half's moving. Good. And then a couple breaths here, think about breathing down here into the side of the body. Nice, and switch sides. All right, I've got my hand down, reaching over or across, find what's comfortable for you, but make sure that as you move in this direction, that your pelvis doesn't lift as well. If your pelvis starts lifting, we know that the muscles attached down here are a little bit, maybe a little bit tight and pulling the pelvis up. So you might be able to go here before your pelvis wants to lift. So just kind of find that spot for you. Might be different from day to day. Good. All right, let's come out of that. We're gonna do another form of this lateral flexion here. And this is almost, I like to think of it as like a, almost like a belly dance isolation but I'm trying to slide my rib cage side to side. When we slide the rib cage side to side, there is a lateral flexion in the lumbar spine. So we're gonna use this yoga block again as my rib cage. <laughs> it's multifunctional here. It's a pelvis, it's a rib cage. So ideally the rib cage is sliding side to side, not tipping, we've already tipped it with the lateral flexion. Now we're sliding it. It's like your rib cage is on a shelf that's level and it's going side to side. It's a different way to use these muscles. And I'm gonna show you again from the side view as we're going side to side. And we're, notice I'm not tucking here. So elevate your hips as much as you need to, whether that be yoga block height or chair height, it doesn't matter, but we're getting some Again, that lateral flexion side to side. And I'm not tipping like this. As I'm doing the slide, you can see the change in my shirt here a little bit. Coming towards you, sliding away from you. Towards you, away from you. All right, take a little break from that. And we're gonna go back to the knee hand position and we're gonna, all, we're gonna do the lateral flexion just like we did seated, but we're going to be in the knee hand position. So what you're going to do here is you're going to keep, you're going to walk your hands 
I'm gonna walk my hands toward the screen here. This is the right for me. So I'm walking my hands this way, but my pelvis doesn't come along for the ride. So I'm walking my hands and then I walk them back to the left. My core is engaged here as I go, but it's not so engaged that I can't move. And back to the left. We pause for a second once we get there and go back to the right. One more time to the left. Remember that pelvis stays in place. Excellent. And now we're going to keep the upper body still and we're going to take the pelvis side to side. So it's kind of like if you were like a dog and you're wagging your tail side to side. So now we're doing the lateral flexion of the spine from the butt, pulling from the bottom half, whereas before we were pulling from the upper half. Nice. All right, and then let's go back to our flexion. You could do total spine flexion, or you can stick with just the lumbar flexion and extension. Talking, so this is untucking the tailbone and then tucking the tailbone again. Or you can do what we call global, which is the full spine. Nice. All right. And we're going to come on out of that one. We're going to do now another motion that the spine can do. So, that again, the spine, we've done the flexion and extension. We've done the lateral flexion, and now we're going to do some spinal rotation, um, or some people will call it torso rotation, but this is the idea that the vertebrae can twist one on top of the other. It's really important that as we're doing any type of rotation, that we have a neutral pelvis to start from, um, and we move very slow, especially if you have... Uh, like uh, any problems with like herniating discs or slipping discs, the rotation, if you add in flexion and extension with it, can be, um, can, can worsen the issue. So I'm really on the setup, I'm gonna sit up on the block to really make sure I can dial in to my neutral pelvis. All right, so that just means you can kind of feel on your, you're sitting on your sit bones and Another way that you can, again, I really want to have this dialed in as we rotate. So if you feel for your hip bones here at the top of the pelvis, and then you find your pubic symphysis, as best as we can, this becomes a, vert they're on the same vertical plane. Like this is the front of the pelvis and it's vertical. All right, so these are the bony landmarks that we're looking for here. And we do the best we can to find that neutral pelvis. All right. Find that neutral pelvis, sitting on the sit bones, neutral through the front. And we're going to, I'm going to turn toward the left. I'm going to turn towards you. And we're just, we're not even going to hold. A lot of times in these rotate torso rotation stretches and movements, we use the hands. I only want you to go as far as you can go and then come back to center. And then you're going to turn to the left again or the same direction that you went before. Especially as we're kind of setting the pelvis, figuring out how the rotation feels. We go slow. We only go as far as our muscles will take us. We also do from center to one side because you're less likely to have any um, issues or pain we limit our motion to one kind of half and then do the other side separately. Let's do a last one. And this time now that's our last one, you can put your hands down on your chair, your leg, the floor, whatever it may be, and hold it here for a moment and take a few breaths. If you want to go a little bit deeper into the rotation, you can just make sure that you're not arching the back or tucking so no none of that uh flexion and extension we worked on earlier 
and then slowly come out of that. I'll face you this time. As I move to my right side, if your mirror image is like to your left side, check in with the neutral pelvis. And we're going to, again, no hands, just see as far as your muscles can take you, rotating toward the right or your second side, whatever. And then come back to center. If you're not on your right, just steps to left. Back to center, we're going to do this a few times. Again, we're trying to get nice long tissues here in the muscles that are between the pelvis and the rib cage, getting them less tense, and more responsive to the movement that we're doing. I'm taking my hands off my legs. <laughs> Try not to let them do much work. We're gonna rotate to the right or your second side. And now you can put your hands down this time. If it feels better for you, you can, the head does not have to go long. We're really just working on that low back today. Good, all right. We're gonna do some ground work now laying on our back for the low back. Hopefully that felt pretty good. As with any of our work here, we wanna go nice and slow, especially in the tender area of the low back for so many people. This first one, I'm gonna straighten out my work left leg and draw my right leg into my chest. Now, depending on your tension, if you are a person with a lot of low back tension and that's like your primary thing, it's likely just doing this knee draw, you'll feel a little bit of a stretch in the low back. It's really gentle. Really gentle way to move your low back. And I'm going in, hold, out. In, out. If you're really tightening your hip flexors in the front of the hip here, when you draw this leg in, if the knee bends, that's a sign of a could be a tight hip flexor. But if you're able to keep the leg relatively straight, you might feel stretch in the front of that arm. You get a low back and a hip. And let's come on out of that. Straighten the right leg. Draw in. The opposite knee and hold it for a moment and let it relax. Draw it in, let it relax. Now I'm holding my hands underneath my knee because that'll generally put less pressure on the knee joint. If your knees feel pretty good, you can get a little bit more um, low, you know, a little bit more active. Maybe not active, but you can do a little bit bigger low back stretch going over the knee. But it's kind of your choice of what feels good. If you know you've got knee issues, I'd stay under. A couple more times here. All right, then we're going to take both knees. I'm putting both, I'm putting each hand behind my Behind my knee here and drawing it in, just gonna tuck the tailbone under. So we're getting a really gentle uh, spinal flexion. It can be done in bed, both of these ones. So what we're doing here is we get a little gentle flexion for the low back. We get deep hip knee and knee flexion as well. And we're going to turn this over into our knee hand position. Untuck the toes. We can take that, that ankle portion out of this, this motion. And we're just going to gently rock the hips back toward the heels. For most people, the low back will round here, just like it did when we did our knee draw in. So if your knees don't like this variation, Go back to your back and do that double knee draw in again. And 
Nice. Just two more here. Letting the tailbone round when it and tuck when it feels like it needs to. Working on hip mobility and knee mobility, which really do impact the low back as well. I'm going one more time back. Come on down like that. We're going to go to the ground. I'm going to change my orientation here of my body so that you can see the really key piece here. We're going to do a spine, a rotation for the spine on the floor now. And this one can feel really good for folks, but I want you to think of the spine. We want to kind of keep it in line. So we're going to move the spine out of kind of alignment and then we're going to rotate into a straight spine again. So I will show you first, then you can do it yourself. I have my feet flat on the floor, knees bent. I'm going to move my hips toward the, I'm moving them toward the right. And then I'm going to straighten the opposite leg. Then I go across the body here. So then, so I moved my spine out of alignment and then I rotated it back into alignment. Now, if you're on the floor, if being on the floor for you, I can put this under my, my leg as well. But I wanna say if being on the floor with the even with, I have something under my head. Being on the floor without something under your head or even with something under your head feels like you're arching your back a lot. I don't want you to rotate into this. I want you to try and bolster a little bit more. So I'll show you what that would look like. So if you feel like your rib cage is really thrusted up in the air or like your neck like this, and put a little bit more. I like that this is a really nice way to bolster the, the yoga mat, yoga block combo. A lot of times that'll get us a better position. Then I can move to the right, straighten the left, rotate back to the straight spine. You don't have to go all the way. Good. But hopefully you're feeling this one. If we can get the leg across the body, then we can use gravity pulls the leg and then that'll help rotate the spine. But Always be conscious of how your back feels. If you need to put a stack of pillows, if you're at home, put a stack of pillows underneath your leg to hold it up for you. So you don't have to hold up your leg over here. Hopefully you're feeling a nice stretch, especially through the right side of the body. Most people, if they're crossing the right leg over, they'll feel the stretch of the right side of the body. All right, I like to just straighten my leg out after that so I don't use those muscles. I was just stretching. And now I'm gonna, again, feet flat, knees bent, shift the hips to the left or the other side they haven't done. Straighten the opposite leg and we rotate our spine back into a neutral position. My left leg went across, so the weight of my left leg starts stretching out these tissues along the left side of my body. Again, you can put something under your leg if you want to. Some people like to have the knee go all the way to the ground and then kind of let the, this side go back. I like to keep both of my shoulders on the ground so I can kind of tell how far I've stretched. And always add in focus breath work. And your goal is to get this area to slowly, ever so slowly relax and get a little bit more length. Good. And then I'm going to straighten that leg that crossed over and come back to my back. All right. A lot of times after a rotation like that, I'm, I like, we're going to go back to our flow into our knee draw in. So I'm going to do a single side a few times on my right leg. And 
And then I'm going to straighten the right leg and go back to my left leg and draw in. Kind of really gentle way to stretch out the low back. Our bodies are a lot more used to a, a flexion and extension of the spine and not so much that rotation. So that rotational motion, it's nice to use this what the body's used to for kind of recover from the rotational leg. I'm gonna do double leg, draw in, four, Our last one right there. And then we come back to our knee hand position. I'm putting my things to the side. If the knees are bothering you, put the hold up yoga mat or a cushion underneath your knees. If your wrists are bothering you, put the knee hand, bolster the, the heel of the hand on the hand. And we're going to go back to where cat cow begins. So we're a little bit, we just did a little bit of gentle flexion on the ground. Now we're doing gentle flexion and extension here. Push into the ground, engage the core a little bit. Not so much that you can't move, but we're going to, again, pretend like you're wagging your tail. Nice and slow. Excellent. And then we're going to finish seated today. Again, bolster your hips so that your pelvis is in that, that neutral position. You can, we're going to do the lateral flexion stretch, but we're going to do it with the legs wide. And you can do that if you're seated in a chair for this, sit in your chair and your feet will be flat and you'll, um, likely get your arm on the leg, not the elbow. So the legs are wide, your wide, not necessarily my wide. And then you're going to take, if it's available, take the elbow just above the knee on the inner thigh, or you can take the hand and press it into your calf. That's gonna be probably more available to most people. And you're gonna push wherever you go, you're gonna push and pretend like you're squishing a bug in between the two. I'm going to reach up and over or across, depending on how your shoulder is feeling. Feeling the up and over. Again, just like our lateral flexion from before, try and keep both sides of your pelvis in connected to the ground. If you're reaching over and your pelvis is lifting, then it might mislead you how far you're, you're going here in the stretch. But push that push helps turn off the muscle we're trying to stretch in the low back over here. So that squeeze is important. You can go elbow. That's what this the elbow looks like here. So you've got the elbow push and squeeze or fist push and squeeze. And then come on out of that. Again, make a fist, push it into the side of your calf, reach up and over or across. We're stretching out a muscle called the quadratus lumborum by squeezing and pushing here with the fist or with the elbow, we actually help deactivate that muscle so that we can get a bigger stretch. And again, try, I could feel my pelvis lifting up there. So try and keep both sides of the pelvis connected to the ground. Couple more breaths here. All right, and you just did a bunch of movement for your low back. I hope it feels better. One of the best things that you can do right now is to not sit down <laughs> in a chair. Your all oh, your muscles and tissues are all pliable and warm right now in the low back. And however you sit right now, they're kind of freeze in that position. That's why, like people, when they go outside and do some mowing or 
hot weather work and they come back inside and they sit and they get back up and their back hurts. So you're really warm right now. Go use that in some way, whether it be sitting with better posture or going out for a walk. And I'll see you next time for Mobility from the Ground Up.